Hi, I'm T.H. Culhane from the Patel College of Global Sustainability at Florida Gulf Coast University's ETI, or Emerging Technologies Institute here in Fort Myers, and I'm with Ronald Chatelier, who's a student of Dr. Seneshot Sagai, who's behind the camera, the engineering professor par excellence for the project, and we are creating a mobile resiliency trailer that will help bring power to the people when there is a disaster, when there's a hurricane, such as is approaching us right now from the south. And uh, hopefully whenever there's uh, any kind of disruption in civil service, this is for the Food, Energy, Water, Nexus, and Zero Waste Circular Economy Project. And you'll be modeling it with us in 3D and VR, so that those who don't have the privilege of coming here and seeing it in action can put on their oculus or sit at their computer and dive right in fly around and maybe shrink themselves to the size of a molecule and go inside. All sorts of stuff you can do with VR, yeah. which you can't do in real life, right? Well, let me show you what it is. Um, right now, there's no window here, but there's going to be a big window here with a sliding door so you can see what's going on inside so that it's not a black box. But since we can open it right now, let's take a look at what's inside. So, have you ever seen one of these before? No, I haven't. No, so this is the Home Biogas 3.0. It's uh, an Israeli home biodigester that turns food scraps into fuel and fertilizer. So really great because we'll never run out of also food scraps, I should say, and toilet waste. Yeah. So any organic residuals, which we call wastes, can be transformed by the microbes that are inside this tank of water here. It's just a little bit of tank of water into methane gas and a liquid fertilizer that is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium rich. So it's a fuel and fertilizer producer from all the things that we don't want but will always have. The food that we eat, that which goes through our bodies, that which comes out of our bodies, and that which we don't eat, the peels and skins and seeds and all the stuff that we throw away that creates all those greenhouse gases in landfills. You keep it out of the landfill. You scrape your plate right into this tube here. We took this down because we need to build the window box where we're going to feed it from the outside. There's just a little funnel here. So the high alcohol bag system, and then the gas is stored in this balloon up here, and then the balloon goes to a cook stove. And so when the gas is there, there'll be sandbags in here weighing down the gas, and then you turn on the cook stove, and then you cook. So we're gonna put a little table here so that people can do their cooking, and all in the shelter of this fan, this trailer, which Peter is hooking up with that grow watt inverter there, so that we can put approximately what is it, a uh, 1.5 kilowatt system? It's about, actually, well, if you load it down, it's only 3 kW. 3 kW. Yeah, so but really, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the... That's like personally accelerating a full speed right. car. So yeah. between between one and a half and 3 kilowatts of solar power going into a 3 kilowatt battery, lithium iron phosphate battery that's going to be sitting on a table there. The inverter's there. And if you come on inside, will see that it also has a toilet. So there will be a curtain here. The biodigester is plumbed so that when you can scrape your plate over there, open that window I was telling you about, and throw your food scraps in. But you can also come in this side door here and come behind the curtain and do your business, adding your nitrogen through your urine, adding your phosphorus and nitrogen and potassium through your fecal material and all the other micronutrients, we, you know, copper, zinc, molybdenum, all the stuff that makes plants grow really well and makes our bodies healthy. And then when you're done with that, there's a bucket of water here and a little filter. And that bucket of water is the flush bucket. And so this, you just pump and it sends the poop and urine and water up into the biodigester. There's a pipe that goes down through to the same side as the feeding pipe. So the mi microbes from your uh, fecal waste mingle with the microbes that are already in there and attack that food waste and then they eat that. And then this thing is like a stomach in it, or intestines, it just farts and fills this balloon. This balloon will swell up with gas. And then that gas will go via a pipe here to the stove, which we haven't hooked up yet. Okay. So you've got cooking fuel coming out of this. We could also run a hot water heater for taking a shower in the winter or heating water for stuff. The solar panels will be on the roof here connected to the grow watt. There will be lights, of course, because it has solar power and a battery, so we've got electricity. We've got, the only thing we don't have is rainwater catchment. That could be set up, but that's another thing to set up next to it. But it is a food energy water nexus solution. We're keeping about 15 gallons of the overflow in here. That's that liquid nutrient-rich fertilizer. 
and then there's a pipe that goes outside to grow plants for hydroponics in that. So it's a pretty cool little setup and we're going to get a small generator that runs on the biogas because you can also run electric generators on biogas. Now this amount of gas, when this balloon will fall, will let you cook on that burner for about two hours. It will let you run a generator for about 45 minutes, which is enough to charge batteries. So Peter's got the system so that with this inverter, it will uh, charge the battery from the solar panels, but it'll also charge it, right, Peter, off of an AC source, like a generator? Yeah, it can, yeah. Yeah, it can do, so we programmed. So the idea is to bring power to the people and make it a mobile solution that's sort of all intact. And that way you can get to where the power outage is, like if you're in Puerto Rico right now, or maybe in the next couple of days here in Florida, but you'd have your power and you'd have your, your cooking fuel, and you would anticipate that there would not be any garbage pickup after the aftermath of a disaster. And that's when you have a disease burden because people's fecal material say there's broken sewer pipes, let's say that the, uh, that the food waste is falling over and attracting rats and flies and cockroaches and vermin. That's a health disaster. And usually it's not the hurricane or the disaster that kills people. It's what happens afterward with the disease burden, with the contaminated water. So we're saying, no, we can put our food waste in here, put our toilet waste in here, safely treat it here, and then use it to grow new plants later on. So that's the, uh, that's the idea.